In today's video, we're going to be putting these budget batteries that you can purchase through Amazon 3S good capacity. We're going to be using the Arma Vortex and putting them to the test to see which one really performs the best. Welcome everyone, my name is Troy, this is Roadside RC. On this channel you'll see us doing all the things from bashing and crawling, drifting, racing, plus product review videos and how to. And one of the things that I'm always at least personally curious about is what is the best battery for my vehicle? Got this Arma Vortex. It is fairly finicky when it comes to batteries. High powered ESC, apparently fairly uh, high set, low voltage cutoff. And so some folks are getting issues where they put their batteries in and they're only getting five, 10 minutes of runtime out of their battery before low voltage is triggered. So that got me thinking, I have these host of 3S batteries. Let me get some fresh ones. Let's throw them in, let's give it a shot and let's see if any of these can stand a test. Now I have my old trusty Ovonic 8000 milliamp, 50C, 8000 huge battery this thing you can see it's been used loved it it has done very well for me we have an rc lipo battery 5280c sokoken 6050c saipom 6080c and then pavway 5280c Basically, all three of these batteries are brand new, brand new, have even not been run. This Pavway has been run maybe two, three times total. This Ovonic has a bunch of cycles on it. So we're gonna really see, you know, this is gonna be my baseline. I'm gonna put this battery in the truck first, run it, see what it looks like, and then we're gonna compare it to these others. Now, your next question is, how are we actually going to put these to the test right so again using the arma vortex because of how power hungry it is we're going to be looking at basically three things i have my gnss performance analyzer we're going to strap it on we're going to take it out in the street in the front see what the max speed is fresh out first thing that we're going to do with all of them do we see a difference in that speed that's provided based on the power of the battery Second thing we're going to do is a runtime test. So we're going to sit down. I have a standard course that I can use in the front yard. We're going to run around that standard course and see how long just time wise does that battery last running around that standard path. Then we're going to be able to compare that to the milliamp hour. Because of course, not all these batteries have the same milliamp hour. And so what we'll end up looking at is kind of doing a ratio of how much time did we get per milliamp hour that was there. And then the third thing is the punch, the feel. Does it feel like it has a lot more power with this battery compared to others? We're gonna be doing that kind of more subjective test. I've got all the batteries charged up. We're gonna run one. We're gonna give it a break and let the motor and everything cool off. Then we'll run the next one and keep going back and forth like that. I have a, I have a fun afternoon plan for me. <laughs> don't worry, we'll fast forward through some of this so that you don't have to sit here and listen to all of it. First up is the stock, the 8,000 milliamp. This is my standard battery, GNSS on the back. We are gonna use the track mode and give it a shot. The results show 55, 55 miles an hour with stock with the Ovonic. Now the major test is going to be here in the front yard. I have a standard track that I run. Come here, turn around this rock. Tall grass. Come around this tree. Woo! This tree also. Make this S. Full throttle blast. Back around and then done. Alright, we're going to test and see how long the battery lasts in this kind of scenario. With the Ovonic baseline, 8,000 milliamp hour, but used up 50 C, and this is an old battery. So 55 miles an hour on the speed run, and I got about 16 minutes runtime here in the front yard. Honestly, there was, there was a lot of stopping and starting in that 16 minutes. I feel like that 16 minutes might be a little, it was 16, uh, 16 minutes, 40 seconds. A little, 
might be a little optimistic. Um, there was a lot of it coming in with like a low voltage flash where I could turn it off and on and keep going. So again, this battery kind of doing what some people are seeing where not quite strong enough. And so, uh, especially full throttle, high grass sags the battery enough that it kind of kicks it. So on to the next battery. In goes the RC LiPo 5200 ADC battery. Fifty-seven miles an hour, so two miles an hour more. The RC LiPo battery comes in 10 minutes, 50 seconds. Uh, really did pretty good. Pretty solid, strong battery there. Next battery up, the Saipom 6000 ADC. All right, the results from the Saipom. 58, oh, got it one more mile an hour yet. Ow. Saipom battery comes in over 14 minutes, 14.58, almost 15 minutes out of that 6,000 milliamp battery. That was a good run from it. Now we're on to this Pavway 5200 ADC. They have a lot of variations of this battery. This is the soft case ADC variety. Oh my gosh, I did a jump. Fifty-five, fifty-five miles an hour. But if I'm honest, I literally did a jump probably at about 55 miles an hour. I'm not too sure what I hit over there, maybe the edge of the curb or something. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of a pass and say that it was right in there with everybody else. It should be good. Pavway battery coming in 9 minutes 18 seconds. Pretty good run, honestly, 5200, so one of the smaller batteries in the group. Um, overall, feeling was good, everything else like that. On to the next one. And then the last battery of the whole group, Sokokin 6000 milliamp 50C battery. Fifty eight miles an hour tied for top speed. Fifty 
And hey, last battery, but as it turns out, not, not least by any stretch of the imagination, the Sokokin battery lasts 16 minutes and 50 seconds. Wow! Never once in that whole time actually had a low voltage cutoff. So claims 50C lives all of it compared to its competitors that claim 80C. And then that 62, that 6,000 milliamp hour, wow, it is there. So uh, kudos to it. Testing is now done. Let's take a look at some of the data. So really looking at the different batteries that we have that we've tested here, when you look across, all of them are there's a lot of them that are really in the same price point here. So you get the Pavway, the RC Lipo, the Sokin 253034. Saipom, most expensive actually out of all of them, was at 45, and the Ovonic was at 42. Speed, I'm going to claim, so you can see that Sokin and the Saipom, they came out ahead, but honestly with the RC Lipo one mile an hour behind, Pavway, if you remember, a couple mile an hour behind, but that was, it also did a jump in the middle of its speed run, so it might be up slightly right here with the others. The Ovonic is the only one that seems like it legitimately was a couple mile an hour down. Uh, when we look at the time and looking at... You know, we had to bias the time based on how big the batteries were. It's not really fair to compare that 8,000 versus a 5,200. Um, so when we divide the total time out by it, you kind of get this ratio down here. Bigger is better. So the Sokokin and the Saipom coming out in the lead again. RC Lipo Ovonic right behind it. Pavway slightly behind those. So again, kind of get that winners over here with these two. The punch, the feel, I was pretty happy with all the way across. Um, I did record what the voltage was when I pulled it off just to make sure that I didn't run one battery way down below another. And honestly, they were all pretty close. Um, I also looked at how big the spread was between them. And so you see most of the batteries had about a 0.04 voltage spread between the three cells in the battery. So pretty good. The, uh, the RC LiPo was 0.08, so it was larger than the others, but honestly, it wasn't, it wasn't a split that I'm worried about um, any kind of quality or any kind of issues. The other thing I noted as I drove it was how many times did I have to stop because low voltage cutoff was triggered on the ESC due to just sag. Um, <laughs> I just recorded many for the Ovonic because it needed a lot of them. The Pavway had a couple, zero and one for the other batteries. But please, please do not take this as me saying anything negative about this Ovonic battery. I have used this battery for probably two years now, at least. I mean, look, you can tell the like abuse and the life that it has had. It's been in crawlers, it's been in bashers, it's been in all sorts of stuff. I think I even put, I had two of these at one time, I think I even put these in the X-Max and ran them one time, which is a horrible abuse of these batteries. Um, all I think we're really seeing here when it comes down to some of the how much the voltage was sagged a little bit when we're seeing that the Pavway and the Ovonic were the lowest when it comes to the mile per hour, some of that kind of thing. All we're really seeing is these batteries age compared to these others. The RC LiPo, the Sokin, and the Saipom, those are all almost brand new batteries. So you can just tell brand new batteries have a little bit more punch brand new batteries have a little bit more kick than batteries that have some age on them especially depending on how much they've been used you know the internal resistance starts to go up they start to just not be quite as powerful so i think that's really at the end of the day all we're showing here when it comes to these two batteries i'm please do not take it as anything negative i think both of these are still very good batteries to be used but really at the end of the day here when we look at this if i had to give the nod to any of these i mean these are all relatively inexpensive batteries that you can get online really the sokokin it came out it's the cheapest battery it's only listed at 50c but it performed just like its adc rivals on either side of it performed just as well or maybe slightly better than either one and it's the cheapest battery out of all of them so i would uh, that is that is that comes recommended but honestly i would i would say as long as you're getting in that 50 to 80 c range you're in good shape 
if you're looking at these batteries, all of these manufacturers have a wide range of offerings. What I would suggest based on my experience is just go ahead and get the one that is the highest C rating that that manufacturer offers, biggest capacity that you can fit physically in your vehicle, and you're probably going to be in pretty good shape. So if I give you an example, I have almost this exact same Pavway battery, except I have it in 50C versus 80C. And when I use this, I can tell a noticeable difference between the Pavway 50C and the Pavway 80C. But when you go and look at it, it's like just a couple dollar difference in what the total price is. And so just go for it. Just go ahead and spend a couple extra dollars. If you're going to be searching budget batteries on Amazon, just go ahead and try to get the ones with the higher C rating within that manufacturer. Um, otherwise, I think you're in great shape. You can choose from any of these and have a nice, a nice time with your truck. So that's it. We're done. I really hope this was useful for you. Please comment down below uh, if you've used any of these and what your experience has been with them, what uh, any kind of feedback or anything that you have from your experience, any other brands that you really, really like and that you've had a really good experience with. I'd love to hear it. Um, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go work on some other stuff. So please leave those comments down below and then come over here. Check out some other videos we've already created and we will see you in the next one. So thank you and goodbye.